Christian Audio, a division of recorded books, presents Can We Trust the Gospels? by Peter J. Williams. Narrated by Jonathan Cowling. Publisher's Note. In this audio edition, you will hear references to tables and figures present in the print and ebook formats of the book. Introduction. It is common today to speak of world faiths or to describe some people as having faith, as if others do not. Faith is seen as a non-rational belief, something not based on evidence. However, that is not what faith originally meant for Christians. Coming from the Latin word fides, the word faith used to mean something closer to our word trust. Trust, of course, can be based on evidence. This book's title, Can We Trust the Gospels, is therefore carefully chosen. It addresses the question by looking at evidence of the gospel's trustworthiness. The great thing about trust is that it is something we all understand to a degree because we all exercise it. Most of us regularly place our personal safety in the hands of others. We trust food suppliers civil engineers, and car manufacturers literally with our lives. We also depend on friends, social media, and financial services. Of course, our trust is not absolute and unquestioning. If we see flagrant breaches of hygiene in a restaurant, we probably stop eating there. But trust is still something we exercise daily. We place qualified trust in news sources, both for information that affects our lives and for information that does not. It is a version of that everyday sort of trust that we are going to consider in this book as we ask whether we can trust the accounts of Jesus' life, namely the four Gospels found in the second major part of the Bible called the New Testament. Trusting the Gospels is both the same as trusting other things and different. It is the same in that we often have to evaluate the credibility of people and things in daily life. It is different in that the Gospels contain accounts of miracles and of a man, Jesus Christ, who is presented as the supernatural Son of God who can rightfully claim ownership of our lives. But before we consider such claims, we need to ask whether the Gospels show the signs of trustworthiness we usually look for in things we believe. Of course, as we examine the Gospels, I would first encourage you to read them. You should be able to do that comfortably out loud in under nine hours. You might worry about which translation to use, but it makes little difference. If you find the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John online or in a printed Bible, you will probably have enough to make sense of this book. 1. What do non-Christian sources say? It is hardly surprising that Christian texts are our main source of information about the origins of Christianity. Most books on archery, baseball or cooking are by enthusiasts of those activities. Christians were the most enthusiastic about Christianity and naturally wrote more about it. The four Gospels were, of course, written by advocates of belief in Jesus as the promised deliverer. They may therefore be said to be biased, in the sense that they are not impartial records, but ones aiming to foster belief in Jesus Christ. However, their bias does not mean we should distrust their record. An innocent man accused of a crime may have a deep interest in proving his innocence, But this bias is not a reason to dismiss evidence he produces. The question then is not whether the gospel writers had an agenda, but whether they reported accurately. Some sources, however, cannot be accused of bias in favour of Christianity. These include non-Christians who wrote within 90 years of the origins of Christianity and left us with records we can investigate. We will begin by considering three writers, Cornelius Tacitus, Pliny the Younger, and Flavius Josephus. Each of these had his own reason for writing, but in no case was it the promotion of Christianity. Tacitus and Pliny were, in fact, openly hostile to Christianity. 